the more frustrating aspects of women's health care is the lack of educated menopause clinicians. Adding to this frustration is the vast amount of misinformation. To increase the confusion, add on the mystery and controversy around hormone replacement therapy, and you've got a minefield for women just trying to navigate during what could be a pretty challenging time in their lives. This video series seeks to help women understand what HRT looks like and also what educated and compassionate menopause clinicians look like. I'm in New York City with the Downtown Women OBGYN, founded over 40 years ago by Dr. Shelley Colton. I'm here to meet with kick-ass menopause practitioners, Dr. Audrey Boxbaum and Virginia Reed. Join me and let's listen to what they have to say. You know, menopause is finally on the topic. It's finally hot. It's finally being taken seriously. And I think many people are aware that there was a big article in the New York Times, um, which finally happened. Um, we obviously have been, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. as providers and practitioners amongst ourselves and the practices we work with, we've been certainly talking about the need for one, clinician education and patient education with both we are deeply committed to. So one of the things, even though it may seem that we're starting off kind of at the end zone, <laughs> we're going to start with talking a little bit about what are the products that are being used and prescribed, what are some of the over-the-counter products, and what do they look like and how do you use them? Because there's a lot of confusion um, and there are a lot of different kinds. So I think um, Audrey's been great. She's collected a whole show and tell here. So I'm going to let um, her go ahead and kind of jump in and probably start off probably with what we knew were the sort of the old favorites, right? The, you know, Premarin, Oral. We were sort of really held in, bound, tight in that, that um, way of delivering meds and, and uh, hormone replacement. And that's really changed over the years. And I think by showing what we have, we'll really see how different that is now. Okay, um, yeah, the historic hormones that were available were Premarin, which is an oral equine estrogen um, made by keeping horses pregnant, and Provera, which is medroxyprogesterone acetate, which is a synthetic progesterone. And we know that women need to take progesterone to protect their uterus from uterine cancer if they take estrogen. But we also know that the synthetic progesterone has been associated with an increased risk of breast cancer. And it was because of that information from the Women's Health Initiative and the misguided way the media presented it that so many women and so many providers uh, were scared away from, from hormone therapy for so many years. And as Virginia said, we have many new options. Uh, we know that using transdermal estrogens, uh, meaning that they're absorbed through the skin and not orally, that means they by bypass our liver so they don't increase risk of blood clot and stroke and pulmonary embolism. We know that those are much safer. And of course, because there are um, there's money to be made, there are many, many options. Uh, we have uh, estrogen patches, and this is actually the brand of Vivel Dot. You can kind of see how small it is. Yeah. Uh, they uh, come um, in uh, boxes of eight and there are different doses. Uh, there are also different patches that are bigger, that are weekly. This one you use, uh, you put on twice a week, so you might change it on a Monday and a Thursday. Or Where would you put that? Um, usually belly, belly or butt. behind yeah. and sometimes under the arm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just not not on, on um, your breasts, basically. Um, and some people develop allergies to the adhesive, so some people don't like it. There are other options that are transdermal. Uh, there's a lot of them. There's Divagel, which is a, a daily alcohol gel that you put on your inner thigh. Comes in different doses as well. There is a ring. This is uh, actually the S ring, but there's a Fem ring that is place vaginally and is good for 90 days, but it gives you systemic absorption. So it, it actually tackles two issues that a lot of menopausal women deal with, the hot flashes and sweats, which is 
the main indication for hormone therapy, uh, but vaginal dryness, or as it's now called, genitourinary syndrome of menopause, um, can be addressed with, with vaginal products, which we'll touch on in a, in a minute. Uh, there's also Evamis, which is a spray that you, this you open and you just spray it on your arm, uh, three, up to three sprays, one to three sprays daily. Um, there's also Estragel, which is a daily pump that you would just also spritz on your arm. Uh, this only comes as one dose, and at least in the United States, the insurance companies only cover one, one bottle a month, even if some women might need more to um, alleviate their symptoms. I think that's something that just, because I know it's a pee for you and for most of us who work in this field, many, many, most estrogen products are not covered by Medicare. And that is uh, an egregious error and it's something that we really need to change because you're looking at, for instance, you might have an allergy to the Climera patch. You would like to get the Vivel. Oops, your insurance company won't cover Vivel. So we need to have a lot more uh, action and, uh, advocacy. and advocacy to change this, to get NAMS and ACOG and all of the other places that have power in this area to really push Medicare to cover because a lot of women, it, it can run very expensive, which is really unfortunate, but it can be really almost too prohibitive. No. I mean, but it's not and even, that's, wrong. that's really wrong. It's not even Medicare. Uh, right. I still have private insurance, and this required a prior authorization, which right. makes providers have more like work to do. And they often will, will say that the option is to take oral estrogen, which as I already said, increases the risk of blood clot. Or they may say, oh, I don't think I brought my progesterone, um, sorry, um, Prometrium, which is micronized progesterone, has not been shown to increase the risk of breast cancer uh, the way that Provera has. And yet many insurance companies will tell women to take Provera and cover that at the lower tier and cover the uh, micronized progesterone at a higher tier. So it's, there, there's a lot of politics and money in, in all of this, which is very frustrating um, as providers. We, we just want to be able to offer women the, the best options. So the estrogen helps with hot flashes, with sweats, uh, with sleep disturbances. Those are sort of what we consider the classic vasomotor symptoms. Uh, also maybe with palpitations. Um, anxiety, many women describe a, a feeling of dread or anxiety associated with their hot flashes and estrogen really alleviates those symptoms. Sometimes you have to fiddle with the doses and, and obviously be in communication with your provider. Um, the um, estrogen also helps uh, diminish joint pain, which a lot of women uh, start to feel as they enter menopause. And of course, the sitting as much as we've done during the pandemic hasn't helped. To kind of talk a lot, a little bit more about actually what happens to the vaginal tissue. Because a lot of women are, I mean, really blindsided by the fact that their sexual activity, whether it be masturbation or digital or, or dildo or penis, is suddenly out. And they think, Maybe it's them, and then they start saying things. We have a world that says, oh, women stop thinking about sex after 55. You know, that's not true. So I think um, learn, knowing that the vagina is actually one of the most estrogenated parts of the whole body. So sometimes it comes a little later, and sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it's the first sign that you notice. Um, and so, what some of the products that we talked about, well, I think you're gonna talk a little bit more, which were just what can you use vaginally? And right now, at least on Instagram, it could be because you know they tagged me, but there are so many new over-the-counter methods. And I just wanna say a, a, something that was really interesting, that this article that came out probably, I'm gonna say six years ago, maybe even longer, which was essentially uh, a study that was done on the, on the product hyaluronic acid, which we now see everywhere as a face product. But it turned out in this study that hyaluronic acid exerts a very uh, a minimal to moderate estrogenic effect 
on the vaginal tissue without being an estrogen. So this is a game changer for a lot of women who couldn't use vaginal estrogen for other reasons. Either, you know, I think we're changing. One of the things that gets confusing for clinicians as well as patients is the, 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 the game is changing. You know, we used to think women who were on, who had breast cancer could never use estrogen at all, anything near it. That's actually changing. We're seeing moves, movements from relearning that, wait a minute, that actually isn't true. Like, so so the, the host of, of vaginal products, I think, uh, became a market that was profitable and available when the Women's Health Initiative came out and suddenly women were all off of their hormones, but were having vaginal dryness and increased urinary tract infections and increased peeing at night and increased um, just urgency and frequency and so all of these products became available and then of course Viagra became available and suddenly women who weren't able to have intercourse were being expected to have intercourse and I mean maybe they wanted to maybe they didn't but uh, they, they, they needed these these products and um, I mean it's it's great that they're there I mean the more options we have uh, the better it is Again, there's cost issues. Um, I'm a big fan of the S-ring. Um, I always joke that I'm 60. Anybody 60 and older used a diaphragm. Anybody 60 and younger did not. So my 50-year-old patients kind of look at her. That goes in and stays in. <laughs> and um, they're like, yeah, <laughs> actually. So this is a, a silicone ring with estrogen, and it delivers a very, very low and steady dose of estrogen. So for patients who've had breast cancer, a lot of the oncologists seem to prefer this. Right. And you don't have to remember um, to do it every night or twice a week or however often you need it. Um, you just have to remember to take it out. And I definitely found patients where there's been a couple inside, but that's fine because they're inert. And um, it's expensive. I think if it's not covered by insurance, it can be up to $800. Uh, for three months. For three months. Uh, we've actually, and I, I don't know if this is legal, but we order have patients order them on, on Canadian uh, pharmaceutical online companies where it's still $200. But in Europe, you can go and you know get it for a few euros. It's, 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 a, it's another one that's really unfortunate. Um, and then Premarin cream, again, I don't use Premarin very much because I don't need to keep horses pregnant. Estradiol cream um, is another option for vaginal uh, estrogen. Uh, it's a little messy, both the Premarin and the um, uh, Estradiol cream. It is available as a generic. It comes usually with a little applicator, and so you can measure it and kind of plunge it. These are a pain to wash. Um, so you can also do basically just put it on your finger and just apply it with your finger. And you usually apply these things into about the lower third of the vagina. You can also put them on the inner labia, uh, which has estrogen receptors and, and the clitoris. Well. And, and, and the clitoris. <coughs> um, there's also vaginal estrogen tablets. Uh, it's called Vagifam. It terrible environmental waste. It comes on little plastic applicators, each one on a separate applicator. Uh, yeah. Um, when it first came out, it was a 25 microgram dose, and then they came out with a 10 microgram dose, and they took the 25 microgram dose off the market. I think the 10 microgram dose twice a week is too low for a lot of women. Way too low. And uh, so I will often have women use it four times a week. These estrogens um, are so local and so low dose that you don't need progesterone to protect the lining of the uterus. So I always warn women when they read the package warnings, it will say, because the FDA requires this, increased risk of breast cancer, increased risk of uterine cancer, increased risk of blood clot. They don't. Uh, I I it's possible that. you could get, I mean, for some women, you know, you'll see, you'll, we usually will do, give a, 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 a vaginal estrogen and you use it per se like every day for 10 days and then you drop down to a maintenance dose whatever that maintenance dose is but there are some people who really you know push their vaginal estrogen in a heavy way and sometimes you might see some bleeding stuff with that right. but for the most part if used correctly you're not going to see any kind of hyperplasia really at these low dosages. Oh, oh hyperplasia being over <coughs> oh, the lining of the line. uterus. Yeah, I, I warn women because the dosing is to start for nightly for twice a week, and and that primes the vaginal tissue, 
during that time, there could be some bleeding, there could be some breast tenderness, you could feel some systemic um, uh, symptoms, um, but you could also feel like your hot flashes go away because you're getting some systemic absorption. And, and then once the vagina is well estrogenized again, it almost becomes a barrier to the absorption, the systemic absorption. So I have some patients who try to use it as little as possible, and I, I think it's actually better to use it consistently, which is generally twice a week. Yeah, and uh, the only other thing I'm gonna say about the tablets and the Vagifem in particular, and sometimes this is true even with the ring, that you're getting the back third of the vagina, but you're not getting, you're not getting the front, and that, that front entrance, you know, right sort of the, the, as the vagina, the other thing also is the vagina changes, and that's a lot of things that a lot of women will ask, like, what happened down there, right? I mean, like, it just started to kind of open and fold, and now it feels like it's right near my ass. Um, so what you can do is, you know, what I say is make sure that also that area of entrance is getting some estrogen. And usually I'll prescribe with um, Vagifem, I'll prescribe the estradiol cream, so a dab will do you there, just so that you're fully getting the full vaginal canal estrogenated. Yeah. And, I, and then also um, making sure that while you are having some sort of penetrative activity or even ex, you know just vaginal or vulvar we should say activity um, to use a silicone based lubricant for menopausal women because it tends to not so the water bases tend to get tacky and pull on the skin and so the silicone really does what it does for windows it does for the vagina it just glides so that's nice and that's what I would recommend um, the other stuff that we have over here are just some um, of the vaginal moisturizers. Uh, I think the one that was around for the longest, at least that I'm aware of, is Hylagyne. Uh, this is Reverie. It's, a, it's been around now for oh, yeah. several years. Um, it's also hyaluronic acid. I have some women who will use their vaginal estrogen twice a week, three times a week, and then we'll use this a few nights a week. I have some women who are just fine using the non-hormonal hyaluronic acid. Uh, and of course now, because it, all these are gaining popularity, there are lots of other versions of that. Um, and then there are some coconut oil-based products also that are, are very popular for vaginal dryness. Um, and I think there are also some CBD um, yeah, compounds yeah. that are, are um, very available. Very effective. I mean, and, and I think also for, people for really like responsive these. Yes, as well. Exactly. Um, well, that's the end of part one. We'd like to give a special shout out to Bigelow Chemists. All those samples that you saw, that was because of their help. So thank you very much. We have some resources to recommend. Certainly the article done by Susan Dominus in the New York Times Magazine is one of the best that all of us have seen. Women have been misled about menopause in the New York Times Magazine, February 1st, 2023. The documentary Hot Flash Havoc that was published in 2016 is excellent. The book by Maisie Hill, also published in 2016, called Perimenopause Power, is fabulous. And another fabulous book that we like is Estrogen Matters, published in 2018 by Dr. Avram Blooming and Carol Tav Tavis. Please join us in part two of our series as our two extraordinary practitioners continue to talk about IUDs, osteoporosis, vaginal health, and the remarkable frustration of not enough educated practitioners. Bye for now.